Hey, what's going on people? You're watching the Unity Sessions on TLD TV. We're joined today by Yojin Already, who's a gospel artist. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Great, great to be here. I am Yojin Already, born and raised in India. And um, I'm an international gospel artist here, producing uh, mostly songs based on uh, Indian language nice. and Indian origin. Um, they're mostly on my YouTube channel and almost all platforms on YouTube. So praise be to God, never expected I'd be here, born in a Hindu family and raised in a Hindu family. And you never know how God can turn around your life and sure. make you be a blessing to the people around. So. Yeah, so I was looking at, in anticipation of this interview really, Christianity in India, and there's kind of a, a contradiction as much as, so 2.3% of the population, which sounds tiny to me, um, are Christian, but 2.3% is also 28 million. <laughs> so I'm like, there's loads of Christians, so I'm a bit conflicted. But what, what was it like growing up being a Christian in a Hindu, Hindu country, in a Hindu family? Good question. Uh, that 28 billion is probably still not true because there's a lot more than just 28 billion who just don't want to come 28 out. Million, 28 yeah, million. Yeah, 28 million who yeah. probably just don't want to come out because they're quite scared of mm. uh, the pressure in the society which will not allow you to be a confident Christian, will not allow you to be on the records as a Christian. So they're probably more than 28 million uh, people. And yes, I was not part of that 28 million. I was unfortunately um, part of um, majority of Hindus. I was born in a Hindu family. Um, my dad kind of raised me up, preparing my mind to do not to not believe in any other religions except Hinduism. So mm -hmm. I almost hated Christianity while growing up. What What does it mean to be um, Hindu? Because for me, maybe it's a UK thing as well. I haven't got that much of a concept, you know. So if you were to talk us through, what were the expectations? What are the expectations of you? So, uh, being a Hindu is worshipping thousands of idols um, and the countless number of idols that you want to worship and each day I was um, supposed to worship a different god so each day had a god's birthday that I, so I would um, worship and being the first born girl child in India I was considered to be a goddess of Lakshmi who is also one of the um, idols um, mm. that um, so I had so much pressure in performing the rituals every day. Um, so what are the rituals? There's so many rituals that we did, but to begin with, we wake up in the morning um, and we light the dia, which is like a candle, um, okay. but in the form of um, a cotton bud and then oil in it. So it's like a candle, but um, in a metallic form. You and a girl is supposed to light that. Um, that brings light to the house. Okay. So every morning I was supposed to do that and I was not supposed to go out of the house um, after 6 a.m. and uh, 6 p.m. in the evening just because it was believed that the Lakshmi goddess um, is supposed to return back home before the sunlight. No, my God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so things like that um, and um, going to temple almost three times a week and going to holy places six times a year barefoot. So this was my wow. lifestyle. <laughs> So who, who decides what the Lakshmi Goddess is supposed to do? Good question. I never asked this. My father. <laughs> <laughs> I just followed what my dad asked me to do. Uh, who decides what Lakshmi Goddess follows is um, an answer that I never knew. Um, my dad told me what to do and why I'm supposed to do it. Um, I think the idol had certain expectations and the expectations were written in the holy books okay. that my dad would read. Um, and, and the holy books are called? Mahabharata. Um, it's, uh, it's like how we have Bible here. They mm -hmm. follow Mahabharata, Ramayana. These okay. were the books that my dad read and much more books that had so much more um, mantras and dad would read them and ask me to repeat after dad. So I would okay. do that. Gosh. So you're in this household, you're considered a goddess, but it don't seem to have many privileges. Right. And so how does that transition go from being raised Hindu, Hindu goddess no less, and then transitioning into Christianity? Um, so the privilege is almost, uh, is considered unprivileged if I became a Christian. So um, because of how Christianity in India is considered as a low cost um, class, 
So people who are Christians actually are, oh, you're, you're from a low class, you serve a poor God. So in India, Christian, yeah, so Jesus is a poor God in many places in India. Um, so if you're worshipping Christ, that means you're going to be poor, or you're going to be broke, mm. or you, you, will not have a, uh, you will not have a privilege of being in a high class society. So um, my dad kind of made sure that I do not belong to any of that background uh, mm -hmm. just because it's a um, social privilege and um, societal shame for my dad if he if my dad's family or dad's background friends if they knew that I was getting saved or going to become a Christian and so is that the major thing that stops in terms of so I get the kind of persecution element in terms of the viewpoint um, so there's a class structure are there any other things that you think are um, things that kind of put people off becoming Christian within Indian culture? Apart from, I think it depends really on every family. My family was a very traditional family. Um, now a lot of families are evolved, a lot of them are very educated and then there's so much liberalism, you can worship any god. So there are households that have three different gods, three different religions. Mm. But my household was very particular that we follow Hinduism. And because I was the first born in the entire generation, um, my dad made sure that I definitely do not cross the house values and house boundaries, house ethics, um, just because my dad's um, dad would be very ashamed of mm. me and the society would be like, oh, your daughter has become a Christian? What have you taught your daughter? I mean, don't you know to control your daughter? How can she go away? Yeah, things I like see. that. <laughs> oh, I understand. So how did you end up hearing about Jesus and such then? Yeah, so my mom was actually a secret believer, has always been insisting me upon learning about Jesus okay. and uh, talking to me about it. But I was such a person where until I experience it, until I feel it, I'm not going to go there. Mm. So I said, no, I'm not going to believe mom, I have to feel it. Um, da, da. So when I was 14 years old, I just finished my high school and I had to join my, um, my further classes. My intermediate, we call it there, back in India. Mm -hmm. um, I joined in a Christian university um, and my dad asked me to promise him that I will never become a Christian because in Christian universities in India, they will teach you the Christ, they will teach you about uh, worship, they will teach you about um, Christianity in general. And I promised dad and said, dad, there's no way I'm going to become Christian because more mm -hmm. than you hating Christians, I hate myself because um, I felt that throughout my 14 years of life back then that Christians uh, appeared to me to be fake because what they practiced uh, was not what they preached mm. and I felt because they said that oh you have to wear black and white oh if you touch that sin you can't go to cinemas or you can't um, wear a dress certain way you can't speak a certain way you're supposed to cover your head and I was like oh, there's no way I'm going to be so boring yeah. I have a better interesting life than that so I thought that I actually thought that Jesus was boring um, mm -hmm. and Jesus and they even show Jesus like to be boring uh, I mean very calm and like not interesting yeah, so that I'm yeah. not gonna be <laughs> long story short I got saved um, during a concert hall in in intermediate when I was 15 years yeah. old so you were coming across some Christians then yes so you had some kind of personal experience of correct Christians right. yeah that can go both ways <laughs> So the dad is not start seeing some warning signs here. How does he take the whole Christian university thing? He, he settles and thinks, okay, you're going to be fine. And or, the, or was he suspicious already? He wasn't suspicious because I gave him such confidence that yeah. I'm not going to become Christian. Because I did talk to my dad a lot of times about that. They just seem so fake to me. Yeah. Like they talk something and then and then they go curse the next day. Mm. So I did see that personally. Um, I wish Christians. Um, genuinely followed what they believed in because that gave me and my dad an opportunity to have been saved a long time ago. Yeah. Um, however, um, my dad wasn't suspicious of me at all um, until the day I got saved. Mm -hmm. So the day I got saved, I uh, went back home and I went into the bathroom because um, my house was so small back then. It was just a living room, a bathroom and a kitchen. Okay. I couldn't play. I couldn't pray in the living room because my dad would hear it. I couldn't pray in the kitchen because there are hundreds of idols in the kitchen. And, you know, there's so much mantras that are going on. My dad would play. Yes, so <laughs> off-putting. <laughs> That's the right word. And I went straight into the bathroom, knelt down, ran the tap water on. And I said to the Lord, 
I don't know what my life is going to be. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go next, but I only know that you are the Lord and I'm giving my heart to you as it is. Please take me and make me the way you want me to be. Yeah. So, awesome. Ever since that day, uh, my dad started to notice a change in me that I wasn't heartfully performing the rituals. I still had to perform rituals. I can't say no. I, I definitely can't go and confess, Dad, now I am a Christian. He would kick me out of the house and the chances mm -hmm. that uh, at 15 years old, I'd be on roads. And I definitely had to act as if I was worshipping idols. And Dad mm -hmm. saw the change in the voice as I was confessing and saying mantras he saw that I was not quite confident not willing to say it so that would make me do more than I would do before just so the just so I would become more clean that day mm. yeah and uh, it'll be interesting for you to also know that my dad would actually bring um, the urine of a cow which is considered sacred and holy and would actually mix it in the water of my bucket that I would take shower just to clean me and, oh and, 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 and purify me. And I was actually supposed to shower with that. If dad didn't smell urine on my body, he would, he would be very serious. That feels like a contradiction. <laughs> um, cow in India is very sacred. They worship cow. Um, it's believed that many um, female idols um, are in the cow's body. They apparently hid themselves during some kind of war that happened. And so it's believed that cows were sick. That's why people don't eat beef in India, yeah. the Hindus especially. Yeah, so okay, so you started this Christian walk, you kind of confessed to the Lord that you, you want him, you want more of him in your life. Your dad seems very opposed. What happens next? What happens next? Um, the life after salvation is a testimony more than life before salvation. For a lot of them, life before salvation is a testimony. Yeah. Um, and the reason being, uh, my dad, who started to notice change um, has been thinking that I've actually I was actually going out with my boyfriend um, and on the other hand side my mom has taken me to a church and the pastor has anointed me and looked at me and for the first time he saw me he said you're so powerful you're gonna travel around the world and and this power inside of your voice and as you sing you will see the dead rise mm -hmm. and when he said that I was shocked because I had no finances moving out of my own city and he's traveling about he's talking about traveling the whole world yeah. and um, long story short I was appointed to be the worshiper in that church I witnessed the church growing from 200 people to 50,000 to 100,000 people after wow. within just span of seven to eight years and I have faced so much persecution in the church. Now the church that's supposed to give us comfort, the church that's supposed to calm us down and accept us the way we are, especially me, I was just 15 year old who just comes into the church with no father, you know, having facing problems at home with the father, having lying to go to church yeah. and having um, facing all that trouble, coming secretly to the church and expecting that comfort in the church, the people start to say things like, oh, who is she to come and worship? Who is she to come and stand and lead us into worship? I mean, she's she's not even a Christian. She's, she's born a Hindu. I mean, why should we stand up? We are born Christians. We are, we are going to sit down. Let's see how she's going to worship. So these kind of things started to come up. And I started to hear these things as early as 15 years old. And now these people who sit in the front rows and claim to be the senior Christians, persecuted me so much to the point they started to call me things like, oh, she must be a prostitute. Oh, she's good looking. Like she must have drunk beer and wine to look that light skinned because in India, look, look light skinned is almost like- Yeah, beer and wine does that? Yeah, um, they believe so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They believe so. And um, <laughs> so it was quite hard. We can laugh now you know, thinking yeah. and talking about all this. It was quite hard because they would talk in such a way that I could actually hear. It was not almost like a rumor, but I can hear what they what they were talking. And I remember my pastor called me into the room after and he told me that from now on, you're only going to face persecution with nothing but persecution. Until I tell you to get off of the stage, you're not getting down, no matter what happens to you. And um, I did not get down the stage until... Um, one day, all of them decided to write a letter against me and kicked me out of the church. 
So. What do your pastor do? My pastor actually believed them, unfortunately, um, and uh, it ha it had to happen for me to be where I am today. Yeah. So um, I worked actually in a film industry before um, as a as a host, um, interviewing celebrities back then. And one of the interviews that I've done involved the actor dancing with me um, in front of the camera. Now this this show has become such big hit that it was played almost in um, all the shows in all times. And these Christians that were waiting to get me off of the stage, waiting for the chance to speak anything against me, mm -hmm. took this tape and showed it to the pastor and said, Pastor, are you sure you really want this kind of woman to lead worship? Mm. Are you sure you really want this woman who does so many things back the camera to lead a holy, sacred place like our church? I mean, you decide. Um, so <laughs> I um, came back home after I finished uh, my college. Um, now, keep in mind, I'm also studying, right? I was just doing mm -hmm. undergraduate handling pressure with education, handling pressure with uh, my families and my dad at home. Mm -hmm. and handling pressure with the church members and thousands of people it's just not tens or hundreds right and mm -hmm. i get a call from uh, my pastor's assistant the monday morning monday evening and he told me that um you don't have to come to church from next sunday sorry you're placed you're replaced by someone else and that actually sounded like a death news to me um because i've given my everything to that church um almost my heart, mind and soul. Mm -hmm. um, I have finished, I have cancelled all my plans going abroad or I have not even thought about my career. I just thought this was everything for me. Mm -hmm. um, I used to not just go into one service but three services in a day. Um, so I went to my Bible, shut my Bible and I said, have I asked you to save me Lord? Have I asked you to make me a worshiper? Have I asked you to anoint me? Have I asked you to put me on a stage with fame and cameras around me? Why did you even save me? And why did you put me through this persecution where people are rejecting me? Now, will I get married with the way people are talking against me like this? Mm -hmm. There are hundreds and thousands of people listening. Mm -hmm. Now, in India, for a girl to have such bad rumors, being called prostitute, being called, um, a, you know, a woman, what, you know, goes to pubs and you know, da da da. I don't drink anything except water. That's generally me. If I like drinking Pepsi, I would have been so happy, but I generally don't like sodas. And for people to talk that she boozes and she drinks, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I said to the Lord, now I'm disowned by my father. My, my dad started to doubt me and, you know, he started to beat me. I'm disowned by my church. I'm disowned by my pastor. I mean, where should I go? Why should I even worship you? Um, I closed my Bible. And um, I, long story short, God asked me to move to America immediately. Um, and I applied um, without writing any entrance exam, which is very rare. I got into the, one of the best universities in America. It's called Pepperdine University. Um, and I was the first only Indian to be accepted in that university. Mm. Now, this is not because of my scores or not because I was great, but it's because God's grace was in it. Mm. And his plan was to be fulfilled in my life. And the plan was that I need to travel the world, not travel India or, or be in that area. Mm. So that had to happen. I was supposed to get kicked out to be where I am today, releasing over seven albums over many social media platforms across internet and uh, to be sitting here where I am today. Yeah, man, I think it's funny hearing you say that. I've often found that's kind of where God does his, his best work. Often when, in, when we're in a position where we have support or there's a potential that someone else could get the glory, then, you know, we kind of end up relying on um, other people. Whereas when we have nothing left, there's a perfect time. There's only one person you can give the glory <laughs> right. to. I know you have a, a saying and a status that you tend to uh, put out there there's something similar right right independently dependent on god yeah that's my life's um, life's line that i yeah. say um as much as i am born in this world alone as much as i want to be independent and be successful in every way i could not be 
independent without being dependent on God. I think everyone should really believe that because if we are trying to believe in our own strengths and mm -hmm. own capacity, once God gives you a stage and fame, we start to believe that, oh, camera is everything. We got to do this for people, for camera, for um, uh, because we have this talent, because of fame. But that's one thing that Jesus rejected on the mountain when Satan said, I'll give you everything in this world, all the glory of the world, just worship me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, God will make sure that you're not comfortable where you are. Yeah, for sure. I think there's definitely been a running theme. Um, this is a, just as a point of interest, so you, when you first arrived at that church, you had no formal singing training, that was true. Right, right, so absolutely. So what, what happened to go from there to sounding awesome? Did you eventually go to training or what, what happened? No, um, so I wasn't really encouraged in my family to do something like that, to be trained in singing or none of my family members were singers anyway. So why would I even have an idea? Let me go singing, right? Yeah. Let me go classes. So yes, I had no um, classes. I did not um, take any classes or never was trained professionally in any way or form. And that's why I was shocked when pastor looked up to me for the first time and said to me that there's power inside your voice mm -hmm. um, and you're anointed and I want you to sing. I want you to worship. And I said, I can't sing. And uh, that's where I started to expect that maybe I can learn this from church members, you know. Um, and they said, oh, let's see how she's going to get it. Oh, let's see if she can sing it, right? Mm -hmm. And But what God promises, he makes sure he fulfills it, no matter what, without any help of any person. I think the only thing that I've done was to take his word seriously and take his promise seriously and pursue the promise. So I made sure that I um, went to the, the choir there and started to sing just started to sing and because the anointing was in me that it just came out to be beautiful that's done. awesome because it definitely does sound beautiful and does sound awesome thank you and your mum through that throughout that period did she kind of take confidence from what you've done or did she kind of <laughs> still keep it secret so um it was more individual situations now because um my mom did not want to come out um, because if she came out, then I would be kicked out. No, oh, wow. Okay. Or, or if I came out, she would be blamed because my dad knew she was, you know. So wait, it was still secret while you're at the church. Yes, 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 yes. People. Absolutely, How? still secret. How is that possible? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, it was such a disaster and I urge so many people, that, that's why I still feel, my, I, my heart still feels for all the people who have such liberty and freedom to go to church straight mm -hmm. up. Whereas I was in a situation where I had to lie every single Sunday to go mm -hmm. to church. I had to um, be on my knees and fast almost to say, Lord, send my dad away. Because the only day my dad had an off was Sunday. Oh, now, the gosh. Sunday was the only day we had church. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say I had one day this friend's birthday, one day that friend's birthday, or this one celebrating anniversary or um, something like that. And But yeah, so with the church, as the church was growing, the church was now divided into three, three to four services. Three services back then where I'd wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, um, go to my grandmom's house which was right next uh, lane and change my clothes there and go to church from there and uh, um, finish all my three services after 10 30 p.m service in the night i would go to a temple put the bindi because mm -hmm. my dad knows the priest of that temple and my dad okay. would ask if my daughter came to the temple today mm -hmm. so i would say hi to him and put bindi and go home like i would tell dad i just came late because i went to the temple mm -hmm. So. That's be creative. That's be creative. <laughs> yeah. So, what difference did America make in your journey? What do you think was the reason why God was calling you to go there? America is such a great place for me today. I say that I relived my life in America. Yeah. Um, it's so important because I left India with such great heartbreak that I thought I'd never return back to India for what India has done to me. Um, societal shame, uh, family shame, church, disgrace, almost everyone disowned me and I felt like this is not where I would belong and I want to go somewhere and thank God God chose America to me where it's such a country of freedom where I was alone, had no family, no friends. I went and I landed at 11 p.m. in the night. I had no one pick me up and I was on roads, booked booked car 
by myself and booked a house online and rented a house online and started studying and working and that is where God has taught me what it is like to live alone.